Hi there, uh, my name's Pete. I'm going to be showing you how to paint reflections. Uh, this picture that I'm using I took on George's Cove a few weeks ago and I sat around and this dog was running all over the beach. Uh, the tide had not long gone out and there was loads of pools of water about and I just basically waited for him to give the correct pose he approached the puddle, looked into it, and I snapped away. And it was absolutely perfect. I couldn't have wished for a better picture. So, it's what I was looking for, and now I'm going to paint it. Uh, initially, the sketch is going to be with a camera Lucida 9 on my iPad. It's just a quick way of getting the picture down accurately, and then we'll be going into the painting after that. So, I'll see you on the other side. As I said in my introduction, I am using an app on my iPad called Camera Lucida. Now, this is version 9. It's an absolutely brilliant app. If you've got an iPad, I well recommend it. The, uh, it allows you to basically do a drawing very accurately and you can sort of expand it as you will see in the video as it goes on you'll see where I actually zoom in to draw some of the more detailed areas and uh, it, you can actually do a time lapse which is obviously what I've done here I've just zoomed in there as you can see and um, it's just superb I've been using it quite a lot and uh, it, for those of you that don't know what a camera lucida is it basically allows you to look through the iPad screen uh, with an image on there and it's sort of the image is ghosted and then you can see what you're doing through the image uh, I use it in a setup with uh, Apple TV I've got it onto a big screen as well so it really really is good for, for drawing but uh, I'll let this carry on and then we'll get on with the painting so I'll catch you a bit later Enjoy the drawing for now. It's about three minutes long and then uh, we'll be into the painting section. Okay, I've gone ahead and masked the dog out, uh, both the reflection and the dog itself. Uh, this is to enable me to put the background on in a fairly loose and free style. I want it fairly simple because I don't want it to detract from the main image actually on the dog there. So I've applied masking fluid around here and just one or two bits that I shall pick out um, a bit later on after we've uh, done the background and let it dry 
So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'll be mixing some colours now. Okay, I've mixed my colours. And these are cobalt blue with a mix of cerulean blue. Just a touch of alizan and crimson just to uh, make it slightly violet. That's uh, Naples yellow and burnt sienna. Again with a touch of blue, uh, cobalt blue, just to grey it slightly. And that is a grey made from cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Uh, basically to fill in some of the darker bits of the sand there. Right, we'll start by damping the paper, give it, get it thoroughly wet because I want these to be a fairly soft mix on the paper. And it's a good tip with um, when you're dampening this, if you want a nice even wash, just to look at it sideways to make sure everything's shiny and you haven't actually missed any bits because obviously any dry paper will leave hard edges. So that's uh, giving it a really good soaking now. Okay. Right, the first colour is the Naples yellow burnt sienna and a little touch of red in it, uh, just to redden it slightly. Putting this on fairly light at the moment. I'm using a medium mop brush there. I, I like mops basically for uh, doing larger washes rather than other brushes. Okay, I'll strengthen the mixture slightly so I felt it was just a little bit too pale. So you've got to remember that watercolour dries up to 30% lighter than when you actually apply it. So it's, it's, it's worth going slightly darker than what you intend and it will uh, even itself out. Alright, that's most of the initial painting sand. I'm just putting a few uh, sandbars actually in the water there. So as I say the tide had not long gone out so uh, there was, it was making puddles rather than big pools. Right, just a touch of grey going into the sand now. Just a few streaks. I'll strengthen this a bit more in a minute. I just want this to infuse into that first wash. Brush stroke direction is fairly important as well. Obviously, uh, up down brush strokes would not work in this situation. It's a bit like painting water, you need fairly horizontal strokes. I'm just soaking up some of the excess moisture there with a damp brush so that it doesn't leave a line along the bottom of the picture. So the frame incidentally it's actually um, it's built a bit like a picture frame. It's on gator board and underneath that frame there's a lining of neoprene rubber which holds the paper down uh, pretty tightly. I've not stretched the paper but it's only working on quarter imperial so the, the buckling is not really a problem. If I was working on half imperial I would more than likely stretch it. Just taking out a few of the bits of sand there ready for putting in the the water now. First layer of water going in.
and a few more strokes of grey into the sand now that it's settled down a bit. These won't spread quite so far. Just breaks up the, uh, the continuity, the colour in the sand there. Gives it a little bit more interest. Thickened up the mixture slightly and sharpened up the edge of my mop brush there to get a finer line, just for a few strokes. And that will be it for the sand, apart from a bit of dry brush work uh, towards the end of the picture. But I'll be focusing more on the water and the reflections next. I'm just going to dry it now so I'll be off air for a little while. Right, time to remove the masking fluid. Uh, make sure my fingers are clean. I'll just take it off the dog first. It's a sharp rub. Love to actually. If you work from the outside towards the middle then you negate the risk of it actually ripping the paper. Although I'm using a cotton paper. Uh, this is Arsh 140 pound which I've never had a problem with masking fluid on um, unlike something like Buckingford where I used to, it used to take chunks out of the border um, I well recommend if you can afford it to use cotton papers rather than uh, the cellulose based papers because they stand a lot more punishment take the reflection out as well. I'll leave the bits on the sand for the moment. I'll take those out as and when we do the final dry brush work. And I can perhaps do some of these as stones uh, just to add a little bit more interest. Actually, I've got all of the masking fluid off. I mean, it said masking tape then. Masking fluid. Which is this one here. This is going to be the first undercoat on the dog. I'll go in with the darker colour to get the shading later, but. This will give us the lighter patches in his fur. So I've uh, dropped the brush size. I'm using a number 10 brush at the moment, a synthetic brush. And we'll just drop in some fancy hour on this. Just bear with me. This tail is fairly dark, but I will just put this in. Okay, I'm trying to keep a wet edge, I don't want any uh, lines in this. Just down the leg. underneath 
The beauty with uh, burnt sienna is it's uh, it is a transparent colour, so I shan't lose my lines of the initial drawing. Just taking a. There's a part of his harness there, which is actually black. I could paint it through, and also he's got this nice scarf on which I'll leave white for now recharge my brush Ear. I'll just leave a little sliver of light just across the top of his ear there. I'll put a bit more to darken this a bit here. It's under his chest. His leg. The other side of the uh, scarf there. Then we have his head. So I'll paint his eye through. I can always lift it out slightly afterwards. light patch there, I'll just lift that out slightly need to lift too much out of it try and keep the contour of the fur Now the reflection is actually a lot lighter than the, the dog itself. You'll quite often find this, except for mid-tones, a dark object will reflect lighter and a light object will reflect darker. That's a weird situation, but uh, as I say, I've weakened the mixture just to, I'm just going to put this in roughly now. the scarf with a bit of a jagged edge.
lift some of this reflection out afterwards as well, and the tile as well. Okay. His bone is quite his neck under his bone there. Right. That's under there. of that. Don't want it too hard. Okay. That's stage two done. I'll let that dry first. Okay, next stage. That's darker brown. I've mixed up a brown with uh, the original burnt sienna. I've put uh, burnt umber in there and ultramarine just to darken it down. So I'm going to put in the darker shades now. spot of it goes even darker under his chest there but uh, dark Another brush on this, just a just a damp brush, just to uh, soften these edges. I don't want them hard. Touch on the ear that's dark. I'm going to fade that in. It's 
so it's softer than the edges. I have to go darker than that and patch down the face like that. So I've changed to a number six brush at the moment just to uh, get some of these finer details in. Go dark around the nose there. Just soften all that. Darken that down even more, just by the ear there. And just in front of the eye, so it's dark. Soften that up. Let's just lift that out. Again, touch more in the ear. and light across the top there. Okay, just a little patch here and lift that. And here again. Just weaken that now, just with the reflection. It's 
Just making a couple of puddles of uh, sand there. off around the edge bits of sand soften that edge up there just clean that up a bit What I'll actually do is I'll put a wash of um, blue over this one I've finished just to tie it all in. Okay, there's a couple of bits of the reflection there. Just have a little dab of that, open it up. Sort on the sound there, don't want that. A bit of neutral tint now, fairly thick, just to get this strap in. I think it's part of his leech or uh, lead, but basically it needs to be pretty dark. It's also part of the harness as well. Right. Mm, 
that in slightly. Pull that catch as well. So it looks like it's sitting on the dog rather than just painted on. And a little bit weaker. Uh, neutral tint again just to paint this name tag in. Obviously what happens up here is reflected down here as well. So slightly weaker mixture of um, paint spray. I'll just put this bottle in. Let's just uh, lose that a bit. in the dark there a little bit. Okay. I'm probably going to need just a touch more dark there just to take the chest down and see it's actually in shadow. I think I'll paint his scarf next. So for that I'm going to use um, Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Ultramarine just in various uh, shapes and blobs just to give it a bit of, I think there's a light blue cast over that as well so I'll we'll probably start off with a touch of cobalt blue just to give it some background I think I need to let that uh, just put some in there, water there as well. Just soften that in. Right. I need to get the hair dryer on that, so I'll see after I've dried it off. Yeah. Just to draw some abstract shapes actually on this scarf. a few dots okay. touch a cad yellow Touch of ultramarine. I'm putting these on 
straight out the tube so they act like a, an opaque That should be enough, I think. Let's just uh, soften them up a bit. That'll do. Right, let's just repeat these down the bottom. Now they're going to be slightly weaker in the reflection, so just uh, Goes back a bit. Just got some ultramarine in there now. Okay, just spread those a bit. Okay, I'm going back to the original brown and I'll put some neutral tint in it just to strengthen underneath here. And we'll get it a bit more shadow under the body there. Let's just blend that out. Better. Just on the back edge. The foot there. Some more detail in the paw. front of this leg. Go ahead and blend that in. Just on the back haunch there. This time is very dark, so
sort of dark under the eye there. And up around, I need strengthening up around the ear. Just bring the ear out there a bit. to pull the eye out, not literally. So I'll dry that first.
Okay. Well, that's apart from one or two finishing touches. That's the dog finished. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to lift some of the bits out of the reflection to cause some sandbanks. So it's just. Need a fairly stiff brush, and I find that um, actually flat brushes are the best for this sort of thing. Just where the tips are on, particularly on uh, rougher paper. This is actually a knot surface, so not too bad. Ha, ah, not too. in the background as well and the feet Okay, a bit of dry brush work, just on the sand again, and that should finish it off. Right, I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brush work on the sand now. Keeping the brush pretty flat, and a fairly thickish mixture, not too much on the brush, just quick sweeps across. that little bit of texture to the sand. some of these black, these white bits out. Oh, let's just blend those in a bit. Just reducing water now over the top of the dry brush just to spread it out a bit and soften some of the edges. So as I say, I don't want this too detailed, so it detracts from the main focal point, which is obviously the dog.
let's put it in the foreground. So the sand's going to be wetter at the edge here, so the edge of this puddle. So let's just put that in there. There's some on the, this side as well. Sand a bit, and then it's down here. Dirty that edge up a little bit. Do me. Right, I'm going to dry this off and then just put a, a wash of blue over that just to tie everything together. Okay, final touch. Got a loaded mop here with some blue. I'm just going to do a thin wash out of this lot just to pull it all together. That's it. Okay, I think the final touch it needs, it just needs a little bit of shadow underneath the dog, basically here, to tie him down to the beach. So I'm just going to mix up a little bit of shadow colour, uh, probably use some neutral tint and a bit of the sand colour that I had earlier on, just to make it a bit darker. And let's see if I can't put a shadow in underneath him. Ties to ties it in rather well. Let's drop that down in 
to the water. Okay, there's the reveal for the final picture. Taking the frame off now. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me on this. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you approved of it. And give it a thumbs down if you didn't. But at any rate, any uh, comments, please leave them below. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.